last week was Pentecost Sunday, and we celebrated the birth of the church, and we talked about how the Spirit entered into that place to call the disciples and those gathered for something new. I would argue that last week we experienced the Spirit of God entering into this space to call us as a church to something new. We looked at one of those very first disciple call stories about how Jesus was on a boat with Simon Peter, and after a long night of fishing, Jesus said to Simon Peter, go to deeper waters, let your net down. And it was through Simon Peter's obedience that they experienced a catch of a lifetime. And then Jesus looked at Simon Peter, and he did something that terrifies me as your pastor. He said, now go and do something you've never done before. Last week, I was suggesting that perhaps God is not only calling us to deeper waters, but God is calling us to go and do something we've never done before. This week, we're going to continue our theme of living water by looking at, yet again, another boat story. We're going to be examining the working conditions around fear, the things that we find ourselves most afraid of the things that might be keeping us from saying yes to deeper waters. I invite you to join me in prayer. Holy God, may you open our hearts so that we might hear your word as we continue this theme of living water. Might we be bold in our response to say yes to you. Amen. So I'm from Wichita Falls, and I think that Wichita Falls, we're famous for two things. One, the world's smallest skyscraper. If you don't know that story, Google it. It's quite fascinating. And two, Tornado Alley. So as a kid, I'm not a stranger to getting in the bathtub with a, with a blanket over my head or a mattress for protection. Uh, going to school, we would hear those sirens, and we'd run to the hallways and get on our hands and our knees and, and put our hands over our heads for protection. Storms, it's, it's a part of my life. And then I moved to St. Angelo, thinking I might be a little bit safer. But I got to tell you, in about a month, God has sent not one, not two, but three storms that made me question and I don't know, should I be proud of my courage or ashamed of my stupidity? My first gathering after being called as your new minister was with the elders. It was a Saturday morning, and that particular Saturday morning, there was a pretty massive storm between Midland and St. Angelo. Rain and hell, it shut down the highway. And yet, despite God's sign, I said, Let's continue forward. So then I go home, and, and I'm excited about my call to, to be your new pastor. Heather and I, we begin to pack our bags. We load our trailer up and the truck up, and for our next trip to St. Angelo was moving day. And so we unmoved our truck. We got everything in the house just right, just like we liked it. We were exhausted, and we went to bed, only to be woken up by my phone going off telling me to take cover because there was a tornado. I spent an hour or so that morning in a closet thinking, God, did I make a mistake? <laughs> and then we get in the car and we drive to the airport, jump on a plane, we go to L.A., we enjoy a few days, we come home. It's the Sunday before I start, so I pretended to be Methodist that day. And after getting in my car and driving just a block away from my house, I quickly discovered there was a flood in San Angelo, a rain that we have not experienced in a long time. God? I said, yes, but... But I'm suggesting today that storms, whether you've experienced one or a thousand, they're equally as terrifying. Amen? But thinking about fear, I've been thinking a lot lately, is fear an embedded behavior or is fear a learned behavior? Are we born with the capacity to fear or is it something that we learn? So there's researchers who way smarter than I and they've done some studies and it 
comes to my conclusion that depending on the science that you believe will determine what they think. But one scientist, he says, the capacity of fear is part of the human condition. And yet certain fears are much more common than others. So I want to take a poll real quick, just by a show of hands. If you're afraid of heights, I invite you to raise your hand. What about public speaking? That's two hands for this preacher. Bugs, if you're afraid of bugs, just a few. What about needles, getting a shot? Yeah, yeah. Enclosed small spaces. What about flying? Anybody afraid to get on an airplane? Have you watched the news recently? Now that I'm a new dad, I'm quickly learning my son Ryder, who's going to be one next Saturday, he is fearless. And I guess this is because he doesn't yet know cause and effect. He's not afraid of heights. Heather and I, we learned that. We bought a a two-story house, and, and he climbs up those stairs super fast without fear. He's not afraid of pulling the hair of my dog. He's not afraid of making a mess in the living room. He throws his toys everywhere. God knows when I do that, I'm in big trouble. He's not afraid of waking up his mom at night, and that's something worth being afraid of. He is fearless. I wish I could say the same was true for me. As a child, Kemper, I think you can relate, I was not, a fear of height. I was not afraid of heights. Uh, the stories I heard this week of, of some of the things that Kemper did right in my alley. But in recent years, heights. I'm afraid of heights. This is a new kind of fear. So when Heather and I, we went on our honeymoon to Costa Rica, and it was an amazing week. We did all sorts of excursions, including whitewater rafting. We checked out some volcanoes. We spent, spent the afternoon on a beach. We volunteered at an animal sanctuary and we went zip lining. I was so excited about zip lining until I was reminded of my fear. Climbing up the mountain and getting on this landing bay, strapping this harness around my waist and, and attaching myself to this line. And off we went, flying through the mountaintops of Costa Rica at heights that were simply chilling. I just knew as we're flying through this mountain that this was going to be the end of me, that that there's no way I'm going to make it back from this. It was perhaps one of the scariest things I've ever done before. In that moment, fear robbed me of the opportunity of fully being present. Fear robbed me of the opportunity of fully being present. And I believe this is true for all kinds of fear, especially the fear that is found deep in our being. The fear of disapproval or rejection. The fear of failure, of illness. The fear of death and isolation. The fear of pain. The fear of the loss of a job, money problems, and so much more. These are the kinds of fears that tell us that we are unworthy and ill-equipped to do the work of God. These are the kinds of fears that I'm suggesting keeps us from saying yes to deeper waters. It is our fear that allows us to be suffocated by the storms of society and prevents us from being a voice of truth as we seek justice in the midst of pain and suffering. These sorts of fear are alive and well in our world, but there's good news. There's good news found in our scripture. Good news that speaks authority over the paralyzing fear of our society. It is when fear is misunderstood that we are robbed of the opportunity of fully saying yes to the calling to deeper waters. Today's Bible story, it's one that is plagued with fear. The disciples, they find themselves on a boat and a great windstorm arises and the waves begin to beat against the exterior wood of this boat, pounding and pounding and pounding. The water is most definitely rocky and there's a cause for fear. But when we read this story, we often get confused of the true fear behind today's story. Remember a good number of the disciples, they were fishermen. They had made a living on the water. They were no strangers to boats nor the storms of Mother Nature. 
The scripture says they were fearful, but they were not fearful of the storm. They were fearful of Jesus' response to the storm. The story goes after the disciples had awoken Jesus. Jesus rebuked the wind and he said to the seas, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. Jesus then said to the disciples, what are you afraid of? Have you still no faith? The disciples, they weren't afraid of the storm, at least not truly afraid of the storm. The disciples were fearful of the power that Jesus demonstrated, that even the wind and the seas would obey him. And it's this sort of authority, the authority that Jesus carried that day, that you and I are called to claim over the fears of our society and the storms of our lives. And that can be terrifying. It can be terrifying because what might God be calling us to? What sort of storm and chaos in this world might God be calling us to speak truth to? To say enough? Now I invite you for just a minute to re-remember a time when you were a child and you were woken up in the middle of the night because of a nightmare and you screamed out. And your mother, she came, ran, she came running into your room and she picks you up. She holds you in her arms. She sits down in a rocking chair and she begins to rock back and forth. She wipes the sweat off your forehead and she whispers into your ear something mothers have whispered thousands of times. Hush now. There's nothing to be afraid of. The question these comforting words raise are simply this. Are mothers telling the whole truth when they say this to their children? Is there really nothing to be afraid of? Now we're intelligent folks and we know the truth behind this question because all too often we are forced to confront our fears and we find ourselves surrounded by the storm of life and the chaos of water. But what Jesus is saying today, Jesus is saying something different. His response is, do not be afraid. You notice the difference in that nuance? Do not be afraid. Often we are paralyzed to saying yes to Jesus' calling because we are fearful of what he might be calling us to do. It is our fear in Christ that pre prevents us from claiming authority over the storms of our world and the injustices of our society. But hear me clearly, Jesus did not come to abolish things worthy of fear, but rather to remind you, you are not alone. As individuals and as a church, when we are forced to confront the storms of our lives, we must remember the good news of Jesus. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. So back to that little lie told by every father and mother. Instead of saying something to your child like, do not be afraid, there's nothing to be afraid of, maybe a better thing to say would be, do not be afraid because you are not alone. And this is what Christ is saying to us today. This is the good news of today's story. You are not alone, we are not alone. Church, it is my prayer that as God is calling us to deeper waters, that we might have faith to know we are not alone. That as we boldly claim to say yes to new waters, we must be aware there's going to be storms. The water's going to come beating against the boat. But might we believe the good news of Scripture, that we are not alone, that God is, is leading us, just as God was faithful to lead the disciples through Jesus, that same God is faithful to lead us. The question is, are you going to allow your fear to prevent you from saying yes? Or, or are you going to claim authority over the storms of society and say enough? Amen.